and brother. What's going on, everyone? I'm Chris Baker. And I'm Ty Backer. Welcome to episode 120 of Behind the Tool Belt with TC Backer Construction. TC Backer family, hopefully everyone is having a great week, man. I know we are. It's Wednesday. It's the best day of the week. Yes, it is. Um, like this, is this is a special show, man. We got a, a fellow local business owner in the house, man, a good friend of ours, David Gatto. Um, he is the owner of Future Solutions Fencing Outdoors. Um, David, what's up, man? What's hey, up? Man, Welcome um, to the studio. Yeah, thanks, guys. Um, I'm very honored to be on this show. I've been watching this show, and I love what I'm seeing here. And, you know, it's, it's a great day. It's a great day to be alive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, we were just talking before the show started, guys, all, all of our local Pennsylvanians. I think we might finally be through all the wishy-washy. Is it spring? Is it, is it winter? Um, you know, it was nice 70, almost 80 degrees today. Um, I had to, to actually turn my air conditioning on today because it what? was like, I swear, man, I, I got home today and... Uh, there was a bomb that went off in my house because Britt launched her, her website for her, her uh, wax melt business today. So, like, there was boxes and everything. It was hot. The dog was panting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, I can't sleep in these conditions. So right. I had to turn the air on, man. That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. No, thank God, though, that the weather's finally starting to turn. Because after a while, I think it just kind of works on your... You know your emotions a little bit, man. It kind of like like situational depression or something starts to kick in a little yeah. bit, and you know with the rain and the cold. And, yeah. You know this morning it was it, it already was you could tell it was going to be a nice day. Yes. And uh, like I said to you guys earlier, I was on the phone with uh, uh, one of our close uh, partners that we that we network with, and and she's out of the Carolinas, and I was telling her today that it was eighty degrees up here, and she's like, I'm jealous. And I was like, well, don't worry, because it'll be 30 degrees tonight. Yep. You know, we live Frosting. in Pennsylvania. Yep. So, but yeah, man, it's, God, thank goodness, man. The sun was out. And I think, uh, like you guys were saying, man, it's going to stay, hopefully, right. you know, right here around. I mean, 70, 65s is okay. It's but perfect, like, dipping man. down into like 29 degrees at night yeah. is just a bit too much. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cold when you come out in the, because you, Pennsylvania is, is, is different, man. You know, I think we're one of the only states in the country, and I'm not sure because I haven't lived in many other places other than, like, Florida and, right. and PA. But, um, you know, we, we can sometimes experience all the seasons in one day. So, yeah. like, Absolutely. you got you got to leave your house all bundled up. By the time, you know, middle of the day, you got to take all these layers off. And at the end of the day, you got to put some layers back on. And it, mm -hmm. just, it just gets crazy, man, especially when you're your exterior contractor. Yep. Uh, it, yeah. just, it just becomes a mess, you know. Yeah. My, my back seat becomes riddled with hoodies that I forget back there. And, you should see mine right you now. Know. Ridiculous. Yeah, I just cleaned mine out today. A couple today. different pairs of shoes in case I'm on a muddy job site. Yep, and, yep. Or, you know, where I got to go into a meeting or something like that. I can't right. wear the same shoes that I just wore when I was on a job site. And it's, it's crazy. My yeah. truck is awesome. So mess. I got jackets and hoodies, depending upon where I got to go. Right. Am I just going to Rudders or am I going to uh, 
CR's office. For right, and I know that you're constantly giving out swag to everyone, too, so I'm sure you keep <laughs> keep a couple loaded in the chamber there to just throw out to some people if they ask for a hoodie or We're something like right that. Though. So if Chris Markey's watching right now, dude, we got to get that store up and Marky Mark. Sooner than Marky later. Mark. Do you use Chris Markey for your T-shirts and stuff like that? Who do you use? No, I actually use uh, Lauren Thiessen. She's with uh, Inkind Designs. Okay. She actually helped rebrand a lot of our company and designed all these shirts. Nice. And anything that we need, she's very, very well-priced. Awesome. Yeah, cool. she's, she's pretty connected, too, with, you know, getting stuff uh, expedited to you. And yeah. yeah. Whatever you need, magnets. You need somebody like that. Yeah. Man. Yeah, she's, she's always on call. Yeah, Chris has been like that for us, too, man. We've used him. Yeah, since he's like a good dude, one. man. He's a good dude. Yeah, since day one. So, speaking of which, so tell us a little bit about what you do and, and you know, what it was like and how you got here and what it's like now. Yeah, so um, uh, I'm not going to give you guys the... PG version and sugarcoat this. Yeah, you we know, don't want the sugarcoated version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our so, viewers are juicing at the mouth, man. That's right, man. <laughs> so where I was, where I'm at now, and where I'm going, and I'm going to share this part of my story because this is what makes my story powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, 2013, I was a homeless, hopeless drug addict living on the streets. I was living in abandoned buildings. I was it, wherever I could stay warm. I was under bridges. I was eating out of trash cans. It was the worst of the worst. I had a really bad drug addiction, mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of time in prison. You know, from the age of 15 to 33, I was in and out of jail. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not going to get stuck in the war stories of where I was, but I want to tell you guys the last time that I ever got arrested was in February of 2014. Mm -hmm. And it was for a retail theft. I was at Walmart in a blackout, a drunk, a drunken blackout, and I had got arrested and, and something happened to me in the back of that cop car. I don't know what happened. It was the weirdest thing ever. It was like God came down and like lifted my addiction from me. I never had any plans on stopping doing what I was doing. I just thought that that's the way it was going to be. I was going to live a life in prison and, you know, I was going to die, you know, and that, so that's what I thought. And something happened in the back of that cop car. I just felt like this wait leave my chest and i said it's over you know so when i went into jail that time it wasn't like solemn i was i was happy you know because i didn't have anything to lose anyways so i started changing in prison you know i started tutoring people in mathematics and you know i was on a, a max security block because of my record mm -hmm. and it, i i ended up doing you know six months in there so but the guys that were on my block a lot of them were in there for homicides and Robberies and it was, you know, 17 year old kids that were never getting out. So it was really deep for me and changing. And so, anyways, you know, I get out of prison, right? And I had nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. You know, I had nobody to call. And I remember going down to this park that's by the courthouse in York, and there was a slide that I was trying to sleep in down there. And somebody was in that slide, like, this is my slide. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where do I go? And so I found a cemetery on George Street, and I started sleeping in that cemetery, you know. And so the one thing that I told myself, I said, no matter what happens, I'm not going to get high. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to use a drug. I'm not going back to that life. And, you know, the funniest thing happened the next day, a miracle happened for me. I, I ran into this place. It was called Life Beacon Foundation. They're right on North George Street in York. And... I was interested in the weights because I love lifting weights. And the guy had a gym on a loading dock out there. So my only intention was to ask this guy, like, how do I use that gym? And so I went and talked to him, and he didn't talk about the gym. He's like, where are you coming from? I had a little bag with me, which was my jail bag. Mm -hmm. My little see-through bag, it had, like, uh, a bag of Keefe coffee in it and, like, uh, flip-flops. And, you know, so I told him, I said, hey, I'm coming from the prison. You know, and... Without any questions asked, this guy put me up. Bob Allen is his name. Mm -hmm. Are you guys familiar with oh, him? Yeah, I know Bob well. Yeah, so, so Bob took a chance on me and just gave me this room. And so, you know, I'm um, doing the recovery thing in there. 100% um, done with everything. Um, I get a job, right, at this place. It's a, it's a, um, they make truck tires there. It was called Treaded Wheel and Tire. Yep. No driver's license. No money. I'm jogging five miles to work every single morning, four o'clock in the morning, through the rain, sleet, hail, snow, 
whatever it takes, you know, I'm getting to that job. I didn't want to rely on anybody else to have to give me a ride to work. If I was going to be late, I wanted to be in complete control of that. And, you know, so I'm, I'm just working at this place, going to meetings, um, doing my thing. And then this all happened really quick. So like maybe like four months of being in there, I'm getting ready to run the work one morning. I got this idea and it just like struck me out of nowhere. And I was like, I'm going to start a business. I didn't know what kind of business I was going to start. And the idea just kept growing and growing and growing. And, uh, you know, so I went to my bosses one day in, in the meeting room and I said, Hey, I just want to let you guys know, I'm giving you my two weeks notice. I'm going to start my own business. And I'm telling you, everybody in the room laughed because, you know, I never had no skills. I never moved up in a job. Like I was just a guy who pushed a broom. I didn't have any ambition. Nobody put any trust into me. They didn't know who I could become, you know, so they all thought I was joking. And then they found out that I wasn't joking. Mm -hmm. And so they're like, Hey, you know, they offered me a raise, but I was set. So, you know, I was set in what I was going to do. So that night, what I did was now I'm living in a halfway house. It's really called, uh, considered uh, a life skills house. Mm -hmm. So I'm sharing a, a bedroom that's like maybe like, I don't know, like maybe like a 10 by six with another guy in there who I don't know. And I used this computer and printed up this quick little flyer that just had a list of things that I thought that, you know what, I think I could mulch. I think I could clean windows. I think I could <laughs> clean gutters. Yeah. You know, whatever I thought that was easy to do. And I literally just took this list because I didn't have money to do anything else and just, I didn't know where I was in York. I mean, I'm not from York. I ended up in here, how a lot of people in recovery end up in York. We get shipped here mm -hmm. from different rehabs and three-quarter houses and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so I just started wandering through the neighborhoods and cold call, knocking on doors. You know, and it was a real simple spiel. I'd be like, hey, my name's Dave. I'm from, by the way, Future Solutions, I just like pulled that out of the air. Mm -hmm. There was no thought into future it's just something that stuck with me i liked it it was the future and it had the word solution in it mm -hmm. so i'm going up i'm knocking on these doors and i'm just talking to customers like hey my name's dave i'm a, i'm starting a new business called future solutions you know i'm giving out really good deals and hand them a list of stuff you know that was an old sales trick you hand it to them and they automatically grab it i knew that from traveling around the united states doing door-to-door -door sales mm -hmm. when i was younger so i had a lot of sales skills mm -hmm. And I'm telling you right now, like, it did not matter what the job was. You know, if it was, you could have told me you had a job shoveling shit. I would say, listen, I am an expert <laughs> in shoveling shit. <laughs> this is what I, I've been shoveling shit my whole life. Right, right? basically. Literally. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I didn't care what it was. You could have told me, hey, I, uh, my wife needs a heart transplant. No problem. I'll source the heart. You know, <laughs> yeah. whatever, whatever it was. Right. Um, I just needed to... Uh, I needed to make this happen. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? And I'm sure a lot of businesses have started like this. Mm -hmm. You know, so no vehicle, no driver's license, no money, people slamming doors on me. Uh, the typical stuff that goes on, they're hiding behind the door. They're not answering. People yelling out the window, not interested. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and there's that defining moment where you're just like talking to yourself and you're like, you know what? Dave, just go back to work. Tell the guys you're sorry. You want your job back. You were just kidding. This is too hard. They're going to call the cops on you. Uh, you're going to get rejected. Um, all that stuff. And I just fought through all that stuff. And I remember I sold my first job. And it was, it was cleaning gutters. You know? And so I sell one job. I sell two jobs. And mind you, I have no vehicle. So there was all kinds of coordination with deliveries. And I'd be walking up the street with, with tools on my back, like uh, gravel rakes and, and metal rakes and... You know, I got all the people, too, in the background from the recovery house, you know, laughing at me, going, mm -hmm. oh, there goes Dave the Builder, you know, yeah. and, mm -hmm. you know, just hating on me, yeah. uh, waiting for me to fall, you know, right. but I didn't pay him no mind. So all this stuff's going on. I get, I finally get my license back. It was suspended for 10 years. I get that back. I buy a truck. It's like three different colors. Mm -hmm. It's a Chevy truck. Right, and at this point, I haven't even gotten into fencing. I'm still doing, uh, I mean, I got into everything. I'm wrapping windows. Heart transplants and, and shit, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, right. What, whatever it took, you know, and, and there was a lot of time spent on YouTube and Google, and 
um, you know, just trying to figure things out and talking to other people and using my resources. And um, so I get this truck, and this truck is so beat up that I'm literally hiding it around the corner mm -hmm. from customers. I do not want them to see this thing. It's three different colors. It's like a 1980-something. And then so uh, I end up hiring some helpers. One truck turns into two trucks. Two trucks turn into three trucks. Mm -hmm. And then one day I sold a fence, right? Mm -hmm. And so I get this fence delivered, right? And it's just me out there. And I figure, you know what? I could take my time. I can YouTube this. I could Google this. You know, I could figure this out. Mm -hmm. Turns out the whole, it's a whole family event. Like the whole, I don't know anything about fencing. The whole family's out there. They got their, their cousins, their nephews, their nieces, their their wives, they're barbecuing out there. They're asking me all kinds of questions, and there's things, components falling out of there, and asking me what's this and what's this. And it was the the fence was on a on a shelving, so it was a really hard dig. Mm -hmm. So I get through this, which I butchered this fence. I ended up redoing this whole fence uh, many years down the road. But um, I said, "There's money in this. Mm -hmm. There's money in the fences." Mm -hmm. And so I decided. I said, "You know what?" Future Solutions Fence and Outdoors. I said, that's what it's going to be. You know, um, at this point, I got everything legalized, got the LLCs. And it's just crazy, like, where this business is right now, how it got going. I mean, we have a 15,000 square foot warehouse. We manufacture fencing. We have an amazing, amazing team uh, uh, where we're at. And, you know... I guess the reason that I, I, I say all this and bring this up is the people that I'm talking to right now, they're the people that are struggling in their business. I want to talk to the people who are just starting a business. I want to talk to the people who are scared to start a business and just let them know, like, listen, I got a terrible criminal record. I have no college education. I was in prison for my graduation, no money. And they all said that you weren't going to do it and you were going to fail. And everybody, nobody believes in you. My mom right. always believed in me, though. Yeah. My mom, it, it didn't matter what I could tell. You know, I was going to you know, build a rocket and fly it to the moon. She's like, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, Dave. You could do it. You know, yeah. um, and if I could do that, starting this company from literally from an idea, then anybody could do it. And, and those are the people that I like to tell my story because it's real, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and, and if you were to add it up mathematically, it wouldn't add up, mm -hmm. but you know, not everything does yeah. add up. Right. You know? Yeah. Not everything's science right. or geometry. Absolutely. Right. I mean, some things just happen and we don't have to know why they happen. We don't yes. have to try to figure that out. We just know it happened mm -hmm. and that it's been a gift and that we're blessed with it. Yes. And we're going to do what we're going to give it away. Uh huh. If we want to keep it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's the really good point that right. you just brought up. And, you know, that's why people would say, Dave, why are you helping your competitors mm -hmm. out? And I love coaching people, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm giving it away when I'm doing that. You know, competition's great. Mm -hmm. in, in it's great eyes. for business, man. It is. It really is. It really is. It's great for innovating. Uh, like a Toyota. Toyota believed in helping their competitors out. They would open up their patents on vehicles and share with everybody because they knew that competition drove the market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know? For so, sure. Yeah. You yeah, for sure. Give it away to keep it. Well, going back to the beginning, unfortunately, you bought a Chevy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So right there, you lost me. Yeah. Okay. I just had to throw that in there that you probably would have been able to scale a lot quicker yeah. if you'd have bought a Ford. Yeah. And that's still running. Uh, I sold it? that thing and I seen, I seen it not too long ago. You Amazingly. Know, I, I'm just How kidding. many colors is it? It's still three. It's still three colors? Yeah, it yeah. was wrecked one time, too. Yeah. yeah. What, what's amazing about that story is is that a lot of our story sounds a lot, a lot alike. Yes. Um, I had uh, a 1980 E350 that I had lived in. Mm -hmm. uh, no heat, no air conditioning. Basically, I was uh, Chris Farley, you know, lived in a van down by the river. Yeah. You know, no gas. Uh, I don't know how many times. Like, I just, that's where it was. That's where we were staying mm -hmm. because I, did, I couldn't rub two pennies together. Yeah. 
you know, and at some point in time, like you, you said, you kind of had like that moment of clarity where it was like, I don't ever want to do this again. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want to live like this again. I know there's better, something better for me. Like you were just so sick and tired of, of being sick and tired of yourself. Yes. At least for me, that's how I Mm -hmm. felt. It was like, I was so sick and tired of the disappointment that I had, that, that other people had in me. You know, and, and like your mom, your mom was your biggest cheerleader, right? Yes. Like you couldn't do no wrong, probably your biggest enabler. Uh-huh. He, you know what I mean? Almost probably loved you to death, yes. literally. Mm-hmm. Same thing. My mom was the same thing. I put her through so much shit. Yeah. You know, she, I don't know how many times she came and bailed me out or picked me up or gave me gas money. Mm -hmm. You know, I manipulated her into giving me 20 bucks so I could drive the van someplace to a job, you know, to to get that work done. And that went on for, you know, for, for too long, Uh you know, and, uh, and that's, that's where we can't, we can't forget that, you know, that feeling, Mm -hmm. you know, because I know I can get complacent myself sometimes Mm -hmm. and, and then I start taking the credit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I did this, Yeah. you know, I, I got myself here mm-hmm. and, it, and it's funny. I just said that because Jana and I had uh, a conversation tonight um, about, uh, and this is a little bit off topic, but it, it was about the people that were put in our life. Okay. Bob Allen was put in your life. Yes. Okay. And then, you know, certain people were put in my life and, and, and not just on the personal level, but a professional level. Okay. And I'm going to go back to 15 years ago when I ran into a guy named Jeff Weiser, he had worked for a company called CR property group. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I met Jeff. I got to meet Craig Rich. I got to meet Eric Brewer. I got to meet Mike Shue and the list goes, it, it just like that ripple effect from there. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then we got tied in with Ryan Holmes, mm-hmm. made some relationships, networked with people there. And it's the relationships that we've built. Yes. Okay. So then those guys that worked for Ryan, some of them went to go work for charter homes. Some of them went to go work for Gemcraft. Guess where we went? Yeah. We went with them. We still do 20 plus years later. We're still doing work for Ryan Holmes. Now I say 20 plus years. I haven't been in business that long, but my previous employment, I had indirectly worked for Ryan Holmes mm-hmm. at that time too, but built relationships then. And it's just funny how, how, and I'm going to use the word God, G O D good yes. orderly direction or gift of desperation. Yes. G O D gift of desperation mm-hmm. that we experienced sitting in that police car. Yes. The, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it just wasn't an option anymore. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. And I, I felt it on a, on a deep level, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's funny cause I remember when Bob gave me that place, that room, I remember how grateful I was and I just instinctively reached out and hugged them. Mm. And today I could still feel that same exact feeling that never went away. And me and even, uh, 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 me and, me and Chris were talking before the show and, and like, you know, how, how grateful, you know, that we are. And I was just telling Chris, like, I cannot believe that I got the, I'm living in the house that I'm living in, in the neighborhood mm-hmm. that I'm living in mm-hmm. with the wife and the beautiful kids, my wife, Holly, uh, it's just, it blows my mind. Like every day when I pull in my driveway, I look at this house and I'm like, is that my house? Right. Yeah. You know, so yeah. the, the gratefulness is always there and it's just mm-hmm. so key. Like, you know, I could be having the worst day. Right. And I think back to those days when, <clears throat> you know, one time I was in prison, I did a whole entire year straight in the hole mm. and it was a terrible hole down there. There was literally like no contact. There was a plastic shell on my door. My food came through a pie hole. They would attach a shower to my cell. There was no wreck in there. Even though it was state law, there's so many fights on the way to the rack yard that it got canceled every time. And I think back to those days where, the holidays went by, the birthdays, the Christmas. Mm. I didn't even know what day it was. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, was, it was so bad. Like, I remember when they came, the priest came up to the door for Palm Sunday, I had, like, uh, endorphins just to see somebody and talk to them, you mm-hmm. know, and just starving to read something. And I think back to those days, and you know what? My day's not that bad. No way. When yeah. I think about it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Poor yeah. David. He had, he had a bad customer situation today. You oh, know, yeah. poor right. David. Yeah. Right. You know, <laughs> yeah. Right. No, and, and that's the thing, man. You got to keep yeah. that attitude, bro. Yeah. Yes. That's, it's, it's really, it's really awesome to hear that. You know, you're you're still pulling up to your driveway every day because I do the same thing. I mean, we we're yeah. we're neighbors, man. Yeah. Like I, I do the same thing. I pull up sometimes, and I'm like, same thing. You know, I I had a bad day. 
you know, yeah. and, and one, of, one of my practices I'm trying to do is I pull up in my driveway and, you know, I recite my words that I recite. I learned this, this, uh, this little thing down at RoofCon. Um, when dad gets home, he sets the tone, you mm-hmm. know, and, you know, so I, I recite that, that thing and I just look at, at what's going on around me and, and mm-hmm. all of a sudden, a lot of the things that happened that day really, they aren't really as big as what you think they are. You yeah. know what I mean? The anxiety releases a little bit. I'm going to go in and I'm going to see my kids they are healthy. Yes. They're happy. Um, you know, I, I walk in, there's, there's, there's laughter, there's, yes. um, you know, screaming at the dog cause she's, she's jumping all over the place mm-hmm. cause we got a big Rottweiler and she doesn't know that she's a big Rottweiler. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, it's just refreshing, man. And I, yeah. I, I see you guys riding your snowmobiles and stuff and yeah. fields and stuff. And like, <laughs> it's just good, man. It's, it's good. It it's is. good to not forget that. It is. And, and, and there's no better feeling like when you walk through the door and the kids, the dog are all running, screaming, like. You know, it, it, my whys have changed a lot over the years, and we all hear the word of oh, your why in business, and and like genuinely, like everything that I do, I do it for my family. Mm-hmm. You know, so they can have whatever they need. You know, and you know, because money is just one thing that you really shouldn't worry about because mm-hmm. that could create a lot of stressful situations. And mm-hmm. I'm just so gifted to have those kids running up to me, and that's like the best part yeah. of my day. It really is. No, it really is. You know, and I've had the blessings of of being able to raise, you know, um, two, three, three beautiful kids. And now we have the uh, the opportunity to, you know, have grandchildren now. Mm-hmm. Um, we have three grandchildren. And today I got to spend a little time with Skylar. And when that, that, when I'm around that baby, her eyes light up, mm-hmm. you know, and at that point in time, nothing else matters. Yes. You know, I, I fortunately was able to get him a little bit early tonight and they were there and then we had dinner and stuff like that. And it's like, you can hear her and she's starting to talk and mm-hmm. she's saying, hi, hi, <laughs> or, you know, she's saying, Papa, Papa, you know, and it's, it just melts my heart. Yeah. And, you know, to be in the position that I'm at today, because unfortunately my oldest son, Jacob, I wasn't in the right mindset at all and unfortunately he suffered from that but now fortunately his mom had her shit together and his stepdad so it wasn't like he had a crummy upbringing but um my my i just i was 17 you know what i mean i wasn't ready for it and we talked about that last week with jen a little bit and uh but 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 today we have our relationships getting better right you, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, so I had another opportunity with, um, you know, Rocket and Mackenzie. And, uh, you know, I tried to learn from the, you know, the, my first child, you, you know what I mean, that I had and did a little bit better with Mackenzie and, and did a little bit better with Rocket. And yeah. now we got, I have the opportunity. You know, they all lived, mm-hmm. you know, thank God. <laughs> you know, we, we didn't, and I don't think any of them are ruined, yeah. you know. So, you know, and, and I tend to be my own worst critic too. I'll beat myself up and I'll yeah. live in that shit. Like, oh, yeah. man, I could have did a better job. Why didn't I do mm-hmm. a better job? Well, mm-hmm. I wasn't ready. Right. I wasn't ready at that time. But to, to, be, to have my eyes open, you know, and to be able to see how much we do affect people around us because of you know when dad gets home he sets the tone yeah you know what I mean? it, yeah one. and i've done that i've done that before and and still do that be just because it, it never for me it never stops and and uh you know i hear people talk about you know and they get home they shut the phone off and i know you're one of those people like that but unfortunately for me right wrong or indifferent i don't do that right do you know what i mean and mm-hmm. and fortunately my family has become accustomed to that because they know if they want the things that they have yeah. You know, and live the, the life that we live today. Unfortunately, dad has to answer that phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it, but there are times, fortunately, because I've been able to surround myself around the Chris Bakers, the Vicks, the Glens and the Chucks and, and the Tylers and, mm-hmm. you know, everyone like that. Now, the, the phone calls aren't being so funneled towards me yeah, right. it, it, it's being funneled in other directions where mm-hmm. i actually do get a minute to breathe now yes you know but that was but but i had to put that sacrifice in mm-hmm. you know what i mean I, I i missed out on the first days of of, of school yeah. i i missed the basketball games i missed all of these things do do i feel guilty about it of course i do mm-hmm. you know but but I, I felt at the time that's what I needed to do. Yeah. And, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. And I, and I know where you're at today, there had to have been some sacrifice there. And at that time, that was the sacrifice I chose. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? But today I get to actually choose those sacrifices. Mm -hmm. I get to pick and choose them a little bit better today, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, it's cool to be in that position, you know, to, to, you know, put all of the hard work, the sweat, the blood, the tears, the equity, you know, everything into it and now kind of sit back. Now I still get in there and start stirring it up just because I'm, you know, a control freak, just, yeah. just a little bit, yeah, we all are. um, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, it's cool to be able to be in the position that we're at. And today, yes, my family is my why, but realistically, yes, that's good. And that's under control. That's not so much my why anymore today. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. My why is today, and we talked about this the other day, was mm-hmm. was to create generational wealth. Mm-hmm. And and what I what I mean by the wealth is is not necessarily monetarily. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It, it's trying to develop leaders yes. who can develop other leaders. Mm-hmm. You know, to watch him, you know, develop, raise his family to be able to put him in a position where mm-hmm. his kids can go to school. Yeah. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. You know, and don't get me wrong, yes, family's right there. Yeah. The, you know what I mean? But that's just not not that I, I can't come up with the right words because I almost said it's just not that important. It is. Do you do you, do you understand what yeah. I'm trying to say? There's like a fine line there of like, okay, I know they're good now. Like that fight, mm-hmm. that struggle to make sure that that they're okay just isn't that much of a struggle anymore. Where I can actually, you know, from you know, the fruits of our labor, we can actually spread the joy, spread the love, Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. to not just our family and be selfish and greedy with it. It's like, okay, yeah. you know, let's, let's see what we can do with this. Let's let Absolutely. roofing be the vehicle. Watch where, other people win, man. Yes. Yeah. Watch to, other people win. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so that anyhow, that's yeah. kind of, yeah, the ripple yeah, effect. For sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I want to, I want to um, talk about something here real quick, David. Um, so, if a lot of people, you know, may not may not know this, if you guys have not seen um, any of the stuff that David posts on his on his social media and stuff, but you guys just recently made a big step in your business um, on on how you guys operate your business, man. Do you want to explain a little bit of that? I think it's a really cool th- a really cool step that you guys took. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, so, you know, for for eight years, what we were doing is we were just installing fence. Right. Mm-hmm. So it started with the installation. Then we started supplying fence first just to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And then so we said, OK, well, we have enough of this fence and we got really good connections. Relationships, like Ty said, is very, very important to build relationships. Um, you know, so, so then we said, you know, we can actually start supplying other companies. Mm-hmm. So that became a big part of what we did. You know, we got the CNC machines, we got the tables, and we got the whole warehouse all fitted out so it's super lean and got our, all of our uh, production processes in place and our staff in place where they needed to be, uh, training people to train people. Uh, and then, so this is what started happening is, so we were supplying 28 different companies over four different states, New Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. And so a lot of people know us. We're really highly rated. We've done a lot of work uh, in and around York and all over the place and some in Maryland. And, and so these guys that we're selling fence to, you know, I would see them on Facebook putting their name out there and then a bunch of recommendations for us. And we were starting to run into these guys out there and, what we pay for material is not what they pay for material, obviously, because we buy tractor trailer loads on a regular basis and we're involved in the manufacturing process. Mm-hmm. So our price is much cheaper. So if we wanted to, we could go below them. And we're not into that business. We're not into right. We didn't never we were, keep the market fair. Right, right. Right. We were more always <clears throat> towards the top end of the quotes. And so, you know, I started to walk a thin line there and I said, Dave, you got to you got to pick. You can't have one foot in the door. One foot out the door. As my friend uh, Brad Jones says, you can't be a, a pimp and a prostitute. That's what he always said to me. <laughs> and, yeah, and, it, and it made a lot of sense. So um, instead of competing against these other companies that we were selling to, we decided to say, okay, you know what? We're going to stop our installation, which, which should have represented around $4 million in mm-hmm. installs this year. We had 14 different subcontracting crews running out there and a project manager for those crews. And so we said, we're going to take all that energy – the outside sales guys, you know, um, all the all the, the, the logistics of scheduling, um, calling in PA1 calls nonstop, uh, whacking gas lines, communication lines. We're going to take all that energy and we're going to bring it back in here and we're going to focus it on customer service. And instead of competing against these other companies, 
we want to grow them. So like our whole facility right now is dedicated to the fencing company or the, or the fencing contractor. You know, it's a safe spot where they can send one of their customers and say, hey, go check out our products. This is our supplier. They can show you how the gates work. They can they have a showroom in there with life-size renditions of everything that they sell. They can give you a tour, show you the manufacturing process. It's a safe place, and they know, like, hey, we're not going to, like, try to sell your customer fence because we do not sell to the public. We drew that line and said we are going to supply to the trade only. So we niched our market. And believe it or not, we're the only fence company around here that took that step. And I seen that in the mm -hmm. market. I said, all these guys are buying off of their competitors. Now, what type of sense does that make to buy for your competitors who will cut you off if they have to do their in-house installs? And, and we all know the pandemic material is really tight. Yeah. You know, um, we've all been on the waiting list and stuff and couldn't get certain colors and certain things. And, and so we decided that we were going to differentiate ourselves and just let our contractors use us as a resource to grow their company and it's it's a scary change it really is and you know i love it man i love it i do love I think it it's brilliant mm -hmm. i i do love it but i got it i gotta tell you sometimes i get scared mm -hmm. you know and you know our sales guys they made a real big change you know they were business to the I call it the public, mm -hmm. you know, with the people. But now it's it's business to business. Yep. And it's a whole nother arena, but they're picking up really, really good. So, you know, we we drew the line and, you know, because at first we were going to sell to DIY homeowners too. And we decided, you know what, we're going to cut that off too because that is a form of competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As a homeowner should not be able to come in and buy a fence at the same price as a contractor and cut the contractor out. Yeah. So we're really protecting. Yeah, because that's going to end up hurting the market and hurting you in the long run anyway. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> exactly. So, yeah, it's a big, big shift going on. But I just want to say this about that. I know a lot of companies are multi-streamed in their revenues and what they do. I know you guys do various different things, but there's some kind of magic in focusing on one thing where you bring that light into a laser beam mm -hmm. and then that laser beam can cut through metal and steel and diamonds and all that stuff. And it's just the culture, what this did for my staff, like, bringing them in to the process and letting them come up with ideas mm -hmm. like, hey, I think we should move this table over here because that'll save 80 steps from over here. And we actually eliminated the other day 45 football fields of walking in one day in our warehouse. But letting them come up with these ideas and like, hey, essential vac system uh, outlets all over here. Yeah, I saw that. Let's get it done. That yeah. day I had a central vac system there and was up. Mm -hmm. you know, And that does something for your employees because – it makes them feel valuable mm -hmm. that they're part of the growth process. Absolutely. And so zeroing in like that really did something for our company. And, you know, and we on honestly decreased our competition by a lot. Because bet. there's not many suppliers to the trade no. in this area. Well, think about who? Lowe's, Home Depot? Yeah. Who who else is there? Lee, is Lee Fence, a, uh, do they sell the product or are they just yeah, so, install? Um, Lee Fence, which they're all really great people. Um, I love all my competitors. Uh, they might not love me, but I got lots of love for them. But, yeah, I mean, your choices were Lee Fence, Prison Vinyl, R&S Fence, and Security Fence. Okay. Your choices. And every single one of those fence companies will actively compete mm -hmm. against their contractors. And mm -hmm. Contractors don't always know what's going on because, you know, a homeowner, like, we're, like, let's say Ty was out there to say, hey, we really like you, Ty. Yeah. You know, we want to use you. Um, security came in at this quote. Mm -hmm. Can you match this? And you're looking at those numbers and you're like, something's not right here. Yeah. You mean to tell me they're coming out here to make 300 bucks off this project? And then a lot of contractors don't know what's going on. What's really going on is they're not paying the same price as you and they're cutting you out. Mm -hmm. You know, because when work starts to get tight, at the end of the day, it's all about the company they got to at least keep their employees busy, even if they're not making a big bang. As long as they're a little bit profitable, yeah. they're good. But the little guys can't do that. No. You know, so yeah. we really differentiated ourselves yeah, in for a sure. way. Yeah, we experienced a little bit of that through the pandemic. You know, yeah. we kind of kind of ran thin yeah. on it, but we kept it We kept it together. We kept it afloat, and we uh, kept the money coming in enough to, to keep yeah. food on the table for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've 
I, I like the idea of where you're staying focused in, in one area. And, and there are actually roofing contractors out there that, that only do roofing, mm -hmm. you know, and there, are, there also are gutter companies that will only do gutters. We kind of just gotten into the whole exterior contractor yeah. realm of things. You know, I, I bought a gutter machine. I, I, I drug it around on an open trailer. I used mm -hmm. to have to cover it up with a tarp. Yeah. You know, at night when I was able to, you know, rub two nickels together and actually end up, I bought, I bought the gutter machine off a guy out of Lancaster, uh, Ralph Wilhelm. So big shout out to Ralph. And on the side of his truck, it actually says, we only do gutters. Like, don't mm -hmm. even ask. Yeah. We don't do roofing. We mm -hmm. don't do soffit. We don't do fascia. Yeah. Siding when there's nothing. Just, we just do gutters. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's, that works for him. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a huge company, another GAF Master Elite company out of uh, Florida, they're called Aries. And uh, it's a family owned and operated business. All they do in there, and they're a, a, a nice size company out of Florida. Um, all they do is roofing. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. I just felt like, you know, especially with the new construction game that we do, we do a lot of new construction. And it, it made it easier for the home builder to make one phone call. You know, we come in, put the roof on two weeks later, we do the siding two weeks later, we put the gutters on. That's smart. Yeah. He, you know what I mean? And that's mm -hmm. just what we do. Most people that know how to do roofing, uh, I shouldn't say that. I was going to say also know how to do siding. Back in the day, that's how it used to be. In my generation, mm -hmm. when, when I grew up, if you did shingle roofing, you did siding, you did windows, you did gutters. Yeah. That's just what we did. Hand in hand. Now things are a little bit different mm -hmm. now. You know what I mean? Because we do have yeah, a couple guys, guys specialize in certain things. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. But back in the day, when we were taught something, that's just that's we we kind of did it all, and that's why we kind of fell into that. But I I could see, and I like the idea that you said, you know, to focus your energy. Mm -hmm. You know that all of that other energy focused on the installs and the mm -hmm. issues and and dealing with you know, homeowners and stuff like that, yeah. because it, it, there, there's a lot that goes into it, especially because things have changed since the pandemic happened. Mm -hmm. Like it's become this Amazon world. Yes. If it's not here in two days, then you're jumping through more hoops to try to massage them, to keep it, you know, you know, communication, yeah. you know, People there's a heck, satisfaction. Yes, yes. There's a really heck do. of a yeah. lot of more. And I've been, I, we call it massaging. There's a lot more massaging mm -hmm. that happens now with the general public than there used to be. Yeah. I, I remember not even that long ago, if you told someone, you know, Hey, you know, we're, we're scheduled out three, four, five, six weeks out. Okay, cool. You know what I mean? Three weeks could go by before you had an initial any more contact with them to let them know yeah. yep we're still looking you know two two or three more weeks out now it's kind of like it, it's changed yes. like it has really changed mm -hmm. but it has bettered us to to come up with ways where now we're working on this um where they'll get a text message yeah you know constantly even from the time like as soon as we get off the phone with them they call the shop Mm -hmm. Okay. Shortly after we get off the phone with them, they receive a text message mm -hmm. confirming the date that when someone's going to come out there, the appointment, uh -huh. his name, his or her name, like, so Tom will be there Wednesday at one o'clock. And then an hour before they arrive, they get a text message from us, letting them know that Tom's on his way, that he'll be there in an hour. Yeah. You know what I mean? It has only made us better. Yes. You know, is the way that we looked at it. We tried to look at it in a positive light, but it was oh, yeah. it was a tough transition. Mm -hmm. yeah. It really was. <clears throat> I like your analogy that you used too, David. <clears throat> the whole you know focusing the laser beam. You know, if you think about mm. the focus of the company and all your people, and you know, and and I'll just compare us to that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because we're so widespread. We have so many different divisions in different states. Yep. And, yeah. You know, so many leads on on departments and all that kind of stuff. You know. Um, so you, we have, we have a big spotlight on our company when, it, if you, if you're thinking of the focus, you mm -hmm. know, we have a big spotlight, Yeah, you know, and you know, your analogy, when, when you take, take the sunlight and you put a magnifying glass, man, that little tiny beam will, you know, it'll cut through some shit, mm -hmm. you know, a laser yeah. beam will cut through a lot of powerful shit. So if you think about the, yeah. the focus that your entire team can now focus on, you know, one avenue to better improve, you know, all the yeah. innovation that's going to come out of that. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that you allow your employees um, to speak up yeah. and come up with ideas, you know, mm -hmm. you, you said you eliminated how many football fields and, and walking for your guys. I mean, that's, yeah. that's awesome, man. And, and, and mm. to have your employees feel empowered like that, I mean, it makes them feel a part of something, yeah. you know? So as they're, you know, as they're coming up with ideas and you're making things happen, you know, it, it really empowers them and it really helps your culture. Absolutely. 
I couldn't does. agree more with that. That's definitely, and it's funny you brought that up. I kind of got a funny story. There was this guy that worked for me for a long time, uh, Keith. I, everybody knows who Keith is. Yep. You might not know Keith, but Keith was my sidekick. The day that um, we decided we were going to go out on our own, Keith came with me. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Keith was with me forever. Okay. And we used to argue a lot mm-hmm. about everything. Okay. He didn't argue with anyone. <laughs> yeah. So we would argue about everything. So we did a lot of siding early on, you know, but predominantly it was siding before we got into roofing. Okay. So siding was like our thing and gutters and those kinds of things like that. So when I was taught to cut siding, because there's an art to cutting siding mm-hmm. and, and bending metal and stuff. So Keith used to like to look at me. So he would be on that side of the cut table and I would be on the wall hanging siding. So Keith used to like to watch me, which I understood. But if you thought about, because our cut table was 12 foot long and then Mm -hmm. there's, you know, eight boxes of siding stacked on top of it and he would have a mess everywhere. So he would have to walk the whole way around Mm -hmm. that table and then clip the siding onto the clip Mm -hmm. and I would pull it up and I would get the shits awaiting for him. <laughs> I did see you up on that scaffolding, dude. <laughs> dude, just cut it, turn around, look at me. Like, I get that you might be a little dyslexic or whatever, okay? Mm-hmm. Like, I get that, okay? I'm about half dyslexic myself, okay? Turn around, <laughs> look at what I'm doing, and turn back around and yeah. just clip it onto the clip. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm like, dude, you know how, like, no wonder you're so tired come Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and yeah. he just, he just had to be right. You know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. it just, I would watch him waste so much time and energy, but it's those little things like that. I mean, think about that. Like he took, and I did it to be an asshole. I climbed through the window, came down and counted like 37 steps, extra Mm -hmm. steps that he would have to take 50 times that day. Yep. You you know what I mean? It's just, it's really, I don't want to say it's common sense, but you know, it's those things make a difference. Those oh, little yeah. things. Yeah. And for a good reason, too, because, you know, you got to watch how you bring that on to be your workers because you don't want to think that you're like, you don't want them to think that you're trying to speed things up to slave them. Yeah. You know, um, what it really is, is you're making things more efficient to save them time and energy, mm-hmm. to save their backs so they have more energy to go play with their kids, to yeah. ride their motorcycles, right. mm-hmm. whatever that they want. And like, we literally like drew our whole building out Mm -hmm. and then we went through every process as a team. We took days of doing it and we went with a, a a wheel measure and said, okay, bring me through the gate process, bring me through the, uh, the bundling process for the, for the caps and your hinge hardware. And like, there was just all kinds of like unnecessary, crazy stuff going. People were building gates, taking them all the way across the warehouse in the opposite direction of where Mm -hmm. they had to go. And then by the time of delivery, making two or three trips walking, like, two football fields to put it where it is. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And so we all work together mm-hmm. on this. And, yeah. you know, you brought up a good point too. Like, like, you know, you were saying about you guys came up with all these systems and processes now to, to communicate with people. Yeah. And I always say like a smooth C never made a good sale. Yeah, sure. You know, and, and use that analogy all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yep. And I was just thinking back to us, like, you know, when your systems and processes aren't built up enough internally and you start bringing on all this extra work, there's this gap. And in between that gap is shitty customer service. Mm. And it's the push that you need where you got to start innovating and then you sit down with your staff and say, okay, how do we stop the communication problems? You know, cause we went through all that and like, yeah. okay, let's call them before they call us. Mm-hmm. Let's get a CRM, a customer relations management yep. that reminds us that puts automatic emails in there. You know what? Let's make a YouTube video and send them the YouTube video that shows a different process after you make your deposit, after you get your permit, after the initial uh, meeting of the minds is done with the contractor who's going to be installed, after the payment. And, you know, we made these videos, and those videos, like, we got to stop the phone from ringing. Mm-hmm. The video stopped the phone from ringing. Okay, what happens next? Watch the video. You mm-hmm. know, and you come up with all these ideas, and, like, you bring these other people out of your staff that you didn't know were in them. Yeah. You know, and they really feel like they're they're part of something. But, you know, we really had, when you were saying all that stuff, it was just bringing back so many memories because mm-hmm. the pain gets so bad. Yeah. And you're like, we got to do something about uh-huh. this. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, 
You so it's, it brought back a lot of yeah. Memories. It makes you better. It makes you stronger. It does going yeah. through that. Like you said, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Everybody would. Yeah, be and doing it's it. funny, man. You you get a you get a big team of people. Um, once you start allowing free range and free thought, mm-hmm. um, and giving people voices, it's amazing what people will come up with. You yeah. Know? You know, yeah. I, I mentioned on the, on a show, <clears throat> I think it was a couple weeks ago. Eric Brewer made a made a video one day. And the title caught my eye. He said, the title was "Stop Hiring Smart People and Then Telling Them What to Do Every Day." Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like right on. you got you got all this talent, and you know, especially today, man, we mm-hmm. get we get a lot of young people. Mm. Dude, people are smart, man. You yeah, know, people will come up with ways to do things. They'll come up with things that that you never really thought of. Right. And you know, there, there's ten ways to skin a cat, right? Yep. As long as you come up with the with the end result, you know, it is okay sometimes to be wrong, man. Oh yeah. You know, and and you know. Trying to trying to implement that on some of some older people sometimes is is tough. But we have a team, man, um, that are they're they're really really um, they're really really good at listening to other people's ideas and come up with, coming up with ideas for themselves too. Yeah, you know, and it's it's really important to have that ability to have the free thought. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a Tuesday meeting that um, you know Ty will go around the room and. You know, how's that, you know, how, how's things in your world? What's going on here? And we, we kind of go around the room and, and share what's going on and come up with ideas. And sometimes the shit works and sometimes it doesn't, right? Mm-hmm. you know, but, um, you know, when it doesn't, you know, we're, we're pretty quick on, on figuring out why it didn't happen. And let's try something that doesn't include that mm-hmm. and, and see what happens here. You know, we've come up with some really cool, um, just in the past year, I'd say yeah. two years. I mean, we've yeah. come up with some really cool systems and, mm-hmm. and things to do, and um, that you know, three years ago we would have never thought we could do. Yeah. You know, yeah. and a lot of that has to do with technology and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, technology has evolved, and it's going to continue to evolve. Yeah. I mean, yes. and I'm sure you you see that, oh, especially yeah. with CRMs. You mentioned a CRM. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm guessing you guys use CRMs. Oh yeah. And, I don't know what we would do without a CRM. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, at yeah. this point, no. And we did it for a long time without we it. Our own manufactured yeah, we, CRM. And man. that people actually did. interested people. Spreadsheets. Yeah. And yeah, people were interested. How, I had. How, um, how does that work? Yeah, but, but it's funny, but I had one click contractor call me about a month ago and wanted me to explain that process, that what we used to do mm-hmm. for whatever, for whatever reason. He must have been thinking of us. Whether he was dealing with a client trying to teach them something, right. I'm, I'm not sure. But we figured out how to manipulate Google, basically. Yeah. You know, and, and, and honestly, now Google, even more so today, um, has been a, a big game changer for us. Yeah. Up, up till recently, we had, like, the main server that people had access to. But now we use Google Suites. But we also have a separate CRM. Mm-hmm. But there are certain files that certain people, you know, folders that that pertain to Chris's division and Brandon's position and costing, you know, that way they, you know, whatever they save goes there and then everyone's got visibility to it yep. that that works in that area. And then along with our CRM, you know, that's a game changer. It's also our estimating software. Yeah, mm-hmm. that communicates with with Ariel. We use a, a company called Eagle View. Mm-hmm. So you basically go into your app, Eagle View app, punch in the address. About an hour or two or three hours later, it comes back and communicates with our CRM and creates your estimate for you. Mm-hmm. So basically, we could be doing quotes and sending estimates right now. Yeah, to people like we don't even have to go out to their house anymore. Yeah. Not that I'm a big fan of that. But it's possible. Oh, I would yeah. prefer to get eyes on the job. Sure, sure. You know, Personal. but but like the technology and it's and it's moving quick. And if you're not keeping up with that, yeah, but you'll be put out. You'll get put in the dust. Real yes, quick, yeah. big time, <laughs> big time. Yeah, real quick. Yeah. yeah, technology from from marketing to 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 running the yes. internals of your business. I mean everything, everything. Yeah. You know, like let's say text messaging. Mm-hmm. You would be amazed on how many people don't want to make a phone call. Mm-hmm. If you don't offer that option to be able to, you know, have them text you like, you know, hey, do you guys do roof quotes or, or whatever, respond to you somehow, mm-hmm. you know, to, to get a quote, you would be amazed at how many people are actually using that. And I wasn't a firm believer in that mm-hmm. right away. But we recently started to do that. And you would be amazed at how many tax messages we've received. Yeah, dude, just today alone, man, I, I reached out to four different, four separate homeowners because I, I handle warranty work and stuff in Maryland. Uh-huh. Um, four different homeowners today. I talked to one of them on the phone. Mm-hmm. All other three, my, my normal protocol, you know, I'll, I'll call them for my work phone. 
leave him a message. And as soon as I leave him a message, I'll shoot him a text message. Yep. Three out of the four did not take my phone call, but mm-hmm. as soon as I texted them, texted me back right away. Yep. yep. You know what I mean? People yeah. just don't like to talk on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. if they you don't know, know it, the it, number, it, 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 they're not going to answer it. I, and I'm guilty of that. Mm-hmm. I, I hate talking on the phone. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, if I'm doing something, man, I can easily respond to a text. You know, s- your phone, you can talk to it when it's in your pocket or it's on your dashboard or whatever. When I'm driving down the road, I can hit a button and talk to my truck, and it will send a text message out. And it's it's a much more efficient. You know, yeah, it's much it more is. convenient. And people yep. love convenience today. Man. Yes, mm-hmm. it's all convenience. about convenience. It is. I mean, just look at Amazon. You yeah, know, that's a big convenience website. Yeah. You right. know, and it's as easy as possible. They built their shopping cart out. They're so successful because of that shopping cart. Literally, you click. You don't got to put nothing in there no more, and it's coming to your house. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and it, it, when you were saying all the stuff about the text message, that's one of the things that in our scheduling app is that we put in there because we wanted to know what was the best time of day and in what method to call that and put that in the CRM. Was it phone, text message, morning, afternoon, evening? You know, and that way we knew, because some people, you know, they don't pick the phone up. Nope. Some people don't respond to text. Some people only respond to emails. They're on the thing like a hawk all mm-hmm. day long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Especially so, if they don't recognize that phone number coming across their cell. Right, right. And, and it's just, it's just, it's so important. Like, like, like Ty was saying about the technology, we had all that stuff. Like we, customers were doing estimates. They were using, it was an app called My Salesman. They used it off of Google. They, they drew their uh, fence in there and picked mm-hmm. out their style and put their gates in and shot them back a rough number. And it was a good screening method yeah. too. Like, hey, our, our, either they're going to be blown away by the number or they're going to make this is reasonable. And then we follow up with a phone call mm-hmm. and say, Hey, you know, um, would you like us to come out and provide some samples and, and show you and if they say yes, they know how much it's going to be. They know what kind of fence that they want and they still tell you to come out to sale. Yeah. You know, and you know, a big transition for us was we made the decision to go completely paperless. Mm-hmm. Like there was no papers floating around in our office. Everything is streamlined. The guys got tablets out there with BOLs on them, with Adobe Acrobat on there for signatures and mm-hmm. electronic signatures. And we literally got to a point where we're like, okay, if we've seen a piece of paper, how are we going to eliminate this? Yeah, you know, because you have to be lean in lean yep. mean, as we call it, and mm-hmm. you you got to be you got to be streamlined with the technology. Yeah, yeah, you know for because. Sure. I can't believe that people are out there writing estimates out on three-parted carbon copy yeah, right. paper. Or yeah, it still happens. Yeah, yeah and, for and, sure. Yeah, and, I, and they're just like, you know, they're, they refuse to change. But let me tell you something. I've seen numerous businesses mm-hmm. go out yeah. Yeah. because they refuse to change because yeah. they want to do things the today, old way. Man. What, happen, what happens if we get a global shutdown again? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. People are people don't want to answer that door and touch your pen to right. to, to sign a carbon copy. You know no. what I mean? We were blessed that mm-hmm. we didn't even know that we were setting ourselves up for success for a pandemic mm-hmm. when we when we went to paperless. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? We we ran lean and and did that, you know, and it wasn't we didn't even know why. I mean, I knew why we were doing it, but we didn't know the benefits that were gonna happen two years later. Yeah. You know, but you know, that that set us up to be able to not have to bring guys to the shop. I don't have to get your paper your paperwork back from service calls, man. I just look in our CRM, yeah, and I can save a PDF file, ship it to the warranty manager for Ryan Holmes, and and he can communicate with the customer. Everything's on calls on our iPads, and you know we didn't even know what we were what we were getting ourselves into and the success that we were going to come mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. Um, but you know nowadays it's like I can't imagine. Um, people being successful not doing it that way. Yeah, I mean, it's, I agree. It's a headache, man. Yeah, no, I agree. And it's about being efficient. You right. know, you mm-hmm. said it, but we all have said efficiency. I mean, it is. It, it's about efficiency. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, time management. You know, going paperless. Um, there, there's one or two things that we're still struggling with a little bit, but I think we're almost at the finish line of being a hundred percent paperless, Yes, you know, and that's a huge, huge thing. I mean, to go through that because when any company who, who's been around for any certain amount of time that, that started out in a day planner, mm-hmm. like literally a hard copy back day planner, like I did, yep. You know, to, to go to Google Calendar, then to go to a CRM, and then to integrate it with, you know, uh, Google Suites. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, I had no idea how great Google uh, Suites was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You, you know, the cool thing, like some if someone sends you an attachment, boom, that's our server now. Yep. 
you, you know, and it's remote. Yeah. You know, I don't need log me in to, to like get into the server, mm-hmm. which is an app that, that gets you tunnels you in remotely. Mm-hmm. You know, it's as long as you have access to Wi Fi or internet service, you can have access to Google. Yeah. Yep. So we can get into our server now. And that's that alone is is a game changer. We can set up shop anywhere in the country now. Yep. Anywhere, like over a weekend. You, you know what I mean? And that's what's so cool about it. You can, it's efficient. You can scale quicker today. It's, it's easily taught because most people know Google. Yeah. They're tech savvy now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's, it's been a game changer for us, man. Absolutely, man. You know, absolutely. but that's what a great stuff, episode. Man. Do we, um, do you have the video for roofers in recovery? Yeah. Cool. So we're going to, we're going to play this video guys. Um, roofers in recovery. Um, uh, He's going to speak on the video here, tell you guys what's going on, if, if any, we have any new viewers here. <coughs> if our, if our uh, system's going to cooperate this yeah. week. I know it didn't cooperate yeah. with us last week. Yeah, so June 3rd is called National Roofers and Recovery Day. I've seen that. I've been following that. Yeah. There. yeah. I was wondering what that was. Yeah, yeah. so we're really yeah. we're going to get involved with it. Um, I think John had reached out to Fox 43, put the bug in their ear. So hopefully we can get some publicity for it that day, the day of. Um, So what they're trying to do is, is get 250 contractors Mm -hmm. to uh, donate just the profits Mm -hmm. from the job. Okay. So pay your distributors, pay your subcontractors or or your in-house guys and whatever profit you make, donate it to roofers and recovery because they're trying to send what 50, be able to have enough money to send 50 people to rehab. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 That's good stuff. Yep. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, there it is. Oh, there we are. Yep. Uh-oh. We wanted to let you know about National Roofers in Recovery Day. It's on June 3rd, and here's what we're asking. We want to get 150 contractors throughout the entire country to decide and agree on June 3rd to build a roof in honor of National Roofers in Recovery Day. And so here's the thing. We are not asking you to donate the entire cost of the job to Roofers in Recovery. What we're asking for is that you pay your suppliers, you pay your subs, and then you agree to donate the profits from that roof to Roofers in Recovery. If we can get 150 contractors across the country to agree to do this, we can raise enough money to reach our goal of sending 50 people to treatment this year. So please, please agree to help us save lives and put some families back together. Yeah, so that's that's a really awesome um, thing that, that they're mm-hmm. doing. The guys over guys and gals over at Rivers and Recovery. Yeah, um, and you know, I keep going back to what um, what Bubba said on our our couple episodes ago. Um, you know, the benefit of just sending one person, the impact that it can make. I mean, look look at your story, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look at your story. The the lives that you're able to change and affect now because one one person was given a chance. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? Do. So. Imagine the impact around the world that can happen if you can send 50 people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dude, that's, that's a ripple effect. That's mm-hmm. huge. You know what I mean? That's a ripple effect. So That's huge. And, and you know, you, th- you think to it, like, <clears throat> your business can't be about money. No. You know, money's important. It's, money's a tool in your company. But, you know, it cannot be. You will not survive if it's just about the money. And we just talked about this with, I was with my coaches and there was a marketer there and we were talking about the three different markets. Like, so back in the day, like Coca-Cola, like, okay, buy Coca-Cola and people would buy Coca-Cola. Then, you know, in the, in the nineties, it turned into, um, what's in it for me, you know? And now what it is now today is it's what difference does it make? You know, cause you gotta be about something. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, like that's a company right there that that's about something, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. so that's immediately what I thought. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. They do amazing stuff, man. Yeah. We met them a couple years ago at a conference called, uh, win the storm. 
and uh, started to learn more about them and, and started to follow them. And then we actually got to meet them again. Oh, man, I don't even remember where. Someplace. Roof Con. Yeah, probably RoofCon. And, and uh, yeah, that's right. Vic and yeah, I actually yeah, went to a meeting. Were actually able, they, had, they held meetings yeah, in the morning Yeah, at time. the conference. That's so awesome. we got to really get to meet Andy and, and uh, Eric. What state are they in? Um, I want to say... Uh, Andy, shoot, is someplace warm. I want to say he's in, in Arizona. Arizona, I was going to say. Yeah. And then uh, uh, One Eric. One in the Carolinas, eh? Eric, yeah, Tennessee. Bubba's Tennessee. in Tennessee. Yeah, Bubba's in Tennessee. And Eric is in the mid, what, Lincoln, Nebraska. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry about that, guys, if you're watching. that, Couldn't figure out or remember where you guys are from. But, no, great. We're looking forward to it. We plan on getting, like, the entire company, like, shutting down work the business for the day to get everybody and their brother that work here out on a roof to uh, tear it off to participate in, you know, the, the, the National Roofers and Recovery Day. So we're look, really looking forward to that. That's going to be something else that I'm sure we'll throw in our arsenal to do on a annually, you know, an annual basis to, mm-hmm. to give back, yeah. you know, and that'll be not necessarily a local thing. Maybe it, it could potentially turn into a local person that goes to rehab, but uh, that's going to be our, you know, our, our, our impact for our industry. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that's we're, cool yeah. Yeah. And then we got our food drive coming up in June that we'll start promoting that to anybody that wants to get involved with that to donate food or, or whatever, uh, you know, healthcare uh, supplies or monetarily. Uh, we'll start, you know, talking about that and bringing that up here shortly. We got to yeah. get on that before uh, sooner than later because uh, June will be here before we know it. it fast, and, uh, man, but, but hey, real quick, Jana brought up a really good point here that I just want to throw out there for Roofers in Recovery. They are a nonprofit. Okay. So if anyone out there is thinking, you know, what if 350 roofers end up donating? It's, it's all going to go towards sending people to treatment. So um, no one's going to sit back and line their pockets when it, with anything. They're a 100% nonprofit mm-hmm. organization. So <clears throat> in case, in case yeah. that matters to anyone, if they're on the fence on if they want to help out or not, yeah. um, it is a nonprofit organization. Right. Cool. And all the proceeds go to that. It's not going to be split up and, and, you know, they decide where they want it to go. It's all going to go to the cause. You know, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not about them making money or... Mm-hmm. anything like that they truly are giving back what was so freely given to them that's awesome yeah and they'll, they'll prosper from that in, in their lives and yeah. in their business and right that's that wealth we talk yeah. about yeah he you know for yeah. sure it's like an ecosystem yeah you know, it, 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 it's like it rains it gives it back it rains some more mm-hmm. you know what would, what would happen if it just rained and the earth held on to it never let it rise it it would be over with, you know. Right. So it's like a, you start participating in that ecosystem. It's just funny how it just comes back around. Yeah, absolutely. Karma, I'm a big believer in karma. Yes, sir. Do yep. good things, and good things will happen to you. Mm-hmm. So it's been a great episode. Yeah, it David, has. Thank you very much for coming on. For real. Man. Thanks for having me. Um, we love having people in the studio. Um, don't you know? Don't get me wrong. I definitely love Zoom and uh, or Google Meeting with you know all of our fellow people in the industry from around the country here, but. Um, it's nice and refreshing to get someone actually up in here, a person that we can yeah. shake hands with, and um, you know, especially a person like yourself that's doing mm-hmm. great things in our local community. So yeah, I appreciate that. Um, it's good stuff, man. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, definitely. Thank live, you. Uh, four minutes from you guys. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Th- no, it's great. Know, right? Yeah, and, and you know, anything that you want to collaborate on, any ideas about what whatever, I don't care if it's a, a charitable thing or a business idea or whatever, don't hesitate to, to reach out to us. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm more than willing to listen to any ideas you have or, or participate in anything that that you want to get involved with, man. I'm down. You know, I'm definitely down. And I've actually been talking to uh, a lot of different people about that. One of them was my coach. I'm involved in a, a thing that's called the CEO Experience, but it's basically of <clears throat> us how to free ourselves up in our business to help other people. And I'm always looking for ideas to do that because we didn't know what to do back then. We would just donate fences to random people. And, yeah. you know, we would never publicize it. I would let the staff do it and stuff like that and pick out the people and, we just never knew the right way to mm-hmm. give because mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff really didn't even turn out good. Yeah, you know, a lot of people are just unappreciative and yes, you know stuff like that. But we do want to be involved in something 
you know, that's that's bigger than us. And yeah. it, it, that does something, too, for your staff. Absolutely, oh man. You know what I mean? For sure. So that's, that's huge. We need about yeah. three or four of them a year, man. Yeah. yeah. We're starting. I mean, I don't know about you, Tom. Yeah. I, I know I'm starting to get the feels. Absolutely. Of needing, needing it in my life. So yes. It, Heck, yeah. It, it puts it puts everyone on, on you know, for lack of better terms, a high. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That, you know, you, you see all the smiles and, and all the people that you affect. And, you know, it's, it's just great, man. Well, and it's it gets great. us out of us. Yes. Very you know, important. that's the important thing, man. It gets mm-hmm. us out of us. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we realize it's really not that bad. Mm-hmm. So, but <laughs> anyhow, what a great show, man. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for agreeing to, to be here tonight and, and great topic, great story, man. And, and, uh, you know, just good, good stuff. So thank you for sharing your story You're with welcome. us. Yeah. Everyone have a great rest of your evening. Great rest of your week. Um, we'll be back at you in a week from now at 7 p.m. for episode 121. Um, so, like I said, everyone enjoy your week. Enjoy your weekend. Um, everyone hop on to, to David's website. Hop onto his Facebook page. Um, give him a like, TC Backer family. Share the love. And um, we'll see you guys. We'll see everyone next week, man. Peace. See you.